I get to preach to some faces today, at least as a picture on the pew. Matthew chapter number 8, and uh, let's turn to the Word of God and uh, excited. I, I love you all, miss you all so very, very much, and so thankful you're a part of our, of our family. God bless you. Matthew 8, chapter number 8, verse number 1. When Jesus was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, and behold, there came a leper. A leper came towards Jesus and worshipped him before, before any miracle, before anything took place, before there was a recognition of God being able to heal him, he worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me whole or clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean and immediately Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. Let's, let's pray and ask God to speak to us today, and let's ask God to touch today and, and uh, the Lord to do a work in our hearts. Would you join me today, Father, in the name of Jesus? We come together today and as a family, spread out, but as a family, we come to bless you. We come to honor you. We come to exalt you and we come to lift you up i thank you for your presence i thank you for the worship i thank you for your word i thank you for the strength that we have with you in you and because of you i pray a blessing on every home i pray a blessing on every family i pray a blessing on this church body wherever they're at all over the world in jesus name we pray Amen. God bless you. You may be seated if you are standing in your homes or wherever you're at. I want to talk to you a little bit today about something that is very commonly being talked about in our, our day. In recent weeks, with so much change in our world, we all have added new, new words to our common everyday vocabulary. Things that were unfamiliar before things that were probably not too commonly spoken of. Now they're being so used more prominently. Words like COVID-19 or coronavirus or virus outbreak or words like ventilators or N95 mask. I didn't never, never knew what that meant. The word quarantine, the word toilet paper, that's words, two words. How about the word stay home? It used to be where you were arrested for breaking into a house. Now it seems like people are arrested, not literally, but for breaking out of their house. And the word that we are now using so commonly are the words, the two words are social distancing. Right now, the entire world seems to be in quarantine mode. People are commanded to maintain social distancing. Everywhere, people are wearing masks to avoid other people's sicknesses and to stop theirs from spreading. We're not visiting anymore. We're not having church anymore. We're not having school anymore. The governor of Florida announced that until the end of this, this summer, until the summer, there'll be no more schools having. So this social distancing, it's also called physical distances. It's a measure taken to prevent the spread of the disease by maintaining physical distance between people and reducing the number of times people come into close contact with each other. Coronavirus, in many cases, is such a horrendous disease where it leaves the afflicted to die alone. No family members holding their hands. In some cases, people leave the home in an ambulance and are never to be seen again by their family. 
or dropped off as a friend of mine was dropped off at the emergency door uh, room door and just left there just to wave goodbye because this is all obviously going to take place very quickly. You'll be humming home, but they were never to be seen again. No funeral, no visitations, no goodbyes. Most will catch it and beat it, but to slow the spread until a vaccine or a cure comes, we are enduring social distancing. Hence, we can't be with you all today, and you cannot be here, except my pictures of my families that have already been sent in. Social distancing today is very, very prevalent. Jesus, however, lived also in a time of social distancing. They had to deal with a disease that was far more gruesome, believe it or not, than COVID-19. In Jesus' day, leprosy, which was a bacterial infection of the nerves and the skin that would be attacking the body. It caused the body to become deformed and infection to occur. It caused the person to stink of decay in flesh. Literally, his flesh would be dying on his own body. In many cases, there is a loss of the soft tissue of the nose, the ears, the fingers and extremities were just literally just being melted away. Infection could lead to damage of the respiratory tract and the skin and the eyes. So literally a leper was a person with an incurable, contagious disease that attacked the entire body. It is a tribute to modern medicine that most of us know so, so little about the disease called leprosy. Most of us have never seen a leper. We know mostly about leprosy by what we read in the Bible. If we had lived in those days, we would have known the disease a whole lot better than we know it today. Because in the Bible times, it was the most feared disease in all the world. It was deadly. Leprosy was incurable and leprosy was hopeless. When you were pronounced a leper, you were now pronounced a death sentence, a slow death sentence, a painful death sentence, and a hopeless death sentence, and certainly a lonely death sentence. They feared leprosy so much that anyone suspected of having the disease was banished from society. In the rabbinic writings, we find remedies for various disease, but there is nothing there listed for leprosy. The rabbi said that curing leprosy was like raising the dead. Today, leprosy is by, known by a totally different name. It's called Hansen's disease after the Norwegian doctor that in 1873 discovered the bacterium that caused the disease. There's actually several kinds of leprosy. We know today that the Bible word translated leprosy actually covered a broad range of skin diseases. In the worst kind of leprosy, the disease spread to various internal organs and tissues began to disintegrate, causing the hands and feet to be disformed in their faces. Nerve endings of the body are destroyed. It's the most critical and dangerous stage of leprosy at this point because it means the afflicted person loses the ability to feel pain. Thus, they might touch something hot and not feel the pain, therefore not taking their hand or their feet away from the damage that is being created in their body. It was feared because it produced such terrible results it was contagious and because it could not be cured by man. And this is how they dealt with it in the Old Testament. Look in your Bibles if you're taking notes. Write down this scripture, Leviticus 13, 45 and 46. We're going to turn there. Leviticus 13, 45 and 46. This is, this is how they dealt with it. The leprous person, it says, who, was, who has the disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head hang loose 
And he shall cover his upper lip and cry out, unclean, unclean. He shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. He is unclean. He shall live alone, which is banished. His dwelling shall be outside of the camp. So Leviticus 14 clearly describes this, this picture and, and, and what was going on in Leviticus 13. And Leviticus 14 states the priest had to authenticate anyone that claimed to be cured from leprosy. Amazingly, no one was ever cured of leprosy. Prior to the coming of Jesus Christ, there were three documented cases of leprosy that were being healed or that were actually delivered of this disease. Number one was Moses in Exodus chapter 4. You might remember Moses. It was God that gave it to him as a sign when he put his hand inside of his coat and pulled it out before Pharaoh. It was also the second one was Miriam in Numbers chapter 12, if you're taking notes. It's where God gave Miriam leprosy as a punishment because of her speaking against Moses. And since God gave it to her, in seven days, God took it away from her. The third person that we find that has listed with the leprosy in the Old Testament is in 2 Kings chapter 5. And this is Naaman. Interestingly enough, that Naaman was not even a Jew, and therefore he was not having to go to the priest to show himself there. That's why Jesus, when he walked on the earth, leprosy was such a dreaded disease. There was no cure. Once people realized that the person had leprosy, that person underwent mandatory, mandatory social distancing mandatory banishment from society. They finished their life in a state of homelessness. No longer could they sit at the table with their family. No longer could they hug their loved ones or children or their spouses. In public places, if normal people were approaching them, lepers had to shout out the warning, unclean, unclean, so that normal people would not come near to them. They finished out their days in hunger, hunger for human touch and the company of those that they loved so much. They were the wild dogs of society of that day. Apart from a miracle of God, the afflicted person with leprosy was beyond hope. Just like every one of us, without God, we are truly without hope. Enter the leper, the story. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 8 and let's reread again the story with this understanding now that we have. In verse number 1 in Matthew 8, where we started, Jesus came down from the mountain, great multitudes followed, and behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. First of all, the leper broke the rule because the leper did not cry out unclean. And secondly, the leper drew close to the multitude of people. Next, he says in the next verse that Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy, his leprosy was cleansed. Even more astounding than the actual healing of the leper are the words, and he touched him. Before he was cleansed, while he was still a leper, while he was still contagious, and while he was still an outcast, Jesus touched an unclean leper. In Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8 is where we, 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 we kind of read that God commanded his love toward us. If you're writing it down, Romans 5 and verse 8, because you've got to grasp this, that God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died 
for us. While we were yet unclean, he came for us. While we were yet unworthy, he died for us. Jump down to verse 20, Romans 5 and verse 20. Same chapter, write it down, 5 and 20 of Romans. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, where iniquity abounded, where all of this filthiness abounded. I'm so glad that grace did much more abound. And so Jesus came. And the greatest story is that God came and he touched the untouchable. He came to rescue the outcast. You may have read over it many times before and thought, okay, so he touched the guy, he healed him, big deal. What's the big deal? But if you were there to see this live in person on that day, you would have seen the reaction of horror on the faces of the crowd. How dare he touch an unclean man? How dare he touch a leper? As they saw Jesus' hand reach forth to touch this leprous man, they were repulsed. In their estimation, this this leprous man had similar status to a stray mangy dog. In fact, they would probably have preferred to pet a stray mangy dog than to touch this man. People probably turned their companions and said, That's gross! Did you see that? He touched him! And certainly some of them may have even wanted to vomit. You see, the good news is you and I are not too gross for God. I'm so glad that your sin and my sin won't stop him from getting close to us, won't stop him from touching us. Your faults won't keep him away from you. Your faults and our iniquity and our sin and our error won't keep God away from us. And I'm so glad that God is not going to socially distance himself from you and from me or anyone that calls out to him. So get the message. This is what we have to understand. God is a holy God. We are unholy sinners. God is so holy and we can't grasp the holiness of God. We we, we have brought him in so many ways down to our level and we've made him so common. But, But he is so holy. The Bible says his ways are so far higher than our ways as far as the heaven from the earth or his thoughts are so higher than our thoughts. We, we can't grasp in our, in our simple human minds how holy God is. And therefore, we are so contaminated with sin. And this may be a part two of last Sunday's message and how we are so bound. And, and every one of us has sin in our lives. Every one of us has been contaminated. As we talked in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, if you're writing your notes down, Romans 3, 23, we mentioned it last Sunday, that all have sinned and all come short of the glory of God. You may feel if people really knew who you were and the wickedness of your past, the bizarreness of your present, that you would be ostracized and criticized like that leper. The people close to you may even have begun to give up on you. But I'm so glad to tell you today that Jesus never gives up. Jesus will not give up. That Jesus will not stop coming to you and getting close to you and touching you just because you are a leper. Regardless of how gross our past or our present is. The lesson of the leper tells us that, the, that, 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 that Jesus still is willing to touch you And Jesus is still willing to touch us. Apart from blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, there is no sin that is too gross for God to reach into your life and touch you. Imagine the worst of the worst. In your mind, imagine the worst, the most vile sinner, the worst person that's ever lived on this planet, and you are looking at a man or you are looking at a woman that God loves. And even though God is holy and even though God is just and even though we are full of sin, and we are full of leprosy 
that God is still willing to touch them, that God is still willing to draw near to them, that God is still willing to come and rescue them, and that God is still willing to save them. The person that is the most vile of the person, imagine the sickest person, the most, the most contagious person drowning in an ocean of sin, and yet God looking at them, and people would have given up on them long ago, and people would have turned their backs on them long ago, and people would have said they're an outcast they're not worthy don't waste your time with them yet Jesus in all of his love in all of his grace in all of his mercy would reach down to touch someone that is so contagious and yet in all of his holiness he looked beyond my faults and he saw my need it is written in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16 look at it write it down 1 John 3 16 Hereby we perceive the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And he goes on to say we need to lay down our lives for our brethren. You see, God loved us so much that he laid his life down for us. In other words, he came to partake of our sickness. He came to partake of our disease. He came and became a leper to live among us. Not that he was man of sin because he was without sin, but he chose to live in a leper colony where he could have been as all of us taken over by that. In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 9, the Bible says this, write it down, 1 John 4 and 9 and 10. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because God sent his only begotten son into a leper colony called the world that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins it's not a big deal that you love God it's a big deal to us but I'm telling you when we get a revelation of how holy God is when we get a revelation of how awesome God is and when we get a revelation of how wonderful God is that's when we understand how awesome it is that a holy God a sinless God a spotless God a God that is majestic a God that is king of glory a God that is lord of lord and king of kings would take and come down to this earth and love us the old song how down from his glory ever living story my God and Savior came and Jesus was his name born in a manger to his own a stranger that 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 song is a revelation of, of of how great it was that God would have come down and the chorus says oh how I love him oh how I adore him my God my 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 source in all of the things that God has done for us. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 53 reminds us of our plight when he says, all we like sheep. Verse number six, write it down, Isaiah 53 and six. All, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He took all of our sin and put it on Jesus on that cross. He took all of our iniquity and put it on Jesus on the cross. He took all of our faults, all of our mistakes, all of our corruption, and he put it on Jesus on the cross. And you see, our story is like that leper. And Jesus how he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. We can come to God with all of our sin. We can come to God, and if you can remember, maybe you can go back and remember the first day you repented, because we don't just repent once. It's not just a one-time thing, I repented. But the Bible says, Paul said, I die daily. And so when you can go back to that first time, when you fell at an altar and you begin to ask God, God, please forgive me of all of my sins. God, I'm asking you to cleanse me and wash me. If you can go back to that day at the foot of the cross where you 
you knelt down and you cried out and, and asking God for forgiveness. At that point, you can remember how awesome it is that our story is like the leper story, how God came and Jesus touched us and he was willing to get down to our level. The old song, I think the quartet sing it, he came down to my level when I couldn't get up to his. Thank God that he does not take notice of social distancing. Thank God that Jesus broke the social distancing rule. Thank God that he did not stay away. The Bible always also talks about the cleansing of ten lepers. If you recall, it's a story where ten lepers were cleansed, but only one returned back to thank him. The Bible says, and he was a Samaritan. And the law goes to show that, that, that Jesus told him after the cleansing, and he says, you need to go back now and show yourself to the priest so they could proclaim you, so they can declare that you are clean or you are healed. The priest had to pronounce them clean before they could rejoin society, before they could break the social distancing room. So therefore, imagine in your mind what emotions must have enraptured those lepers after Jesus pronounces them clean and cleansed of leprosy. It was so great. It's hard for you to grasp it. It's hard for me to grasp it. But here, maybe years, they have been so far away from family and homes. Now all of a sudden they're clean, they're cleansed, declared clean by Jesus and certainly healed. Their thoughts of going home, no longer outcast. They could now rejoin their families, they could now rejoin society. They would no longer have to yell and clean, they would no longer be quarantined. No wonder. No wonder they may have forgotten to come back and thank the Lord. I, I, I don't want to blame them. I don't want to look down on them. I don't, want to, I don't want to call them ungrateful. I believe they were thankful. I just think that they were overcome with so much emotion of getting to finally rejoin society just like most of us are going to do when we get to have our freedom back. I wish I could have seen the face of the priest. Can you imagine the priests are there in the temple and all of a sudden nine lepers walk into the temple. Maybe the tenth one came. But all of them coming in, tattered clothes, the signs of the defects of leprosy. Certainly many of them might have even been known around the community. Some of them have even instilled fear in maybe families or children just by their grotesque look. But here, I imagine the priests are freaking out and they're, they're, they're scared even to talk to them. But notice Jesus was not as scared even to touch a leper. We, we were told to come here so you can declare us ceremonially clean. Can you please declare us cleansed? Those laws had never been applied in a ceremonial leper cleaning ceremony until today. No one had ever been cured and no one had ever been declared or needed to be declared clean. I imagine what they were doing. I imagine they're scrambling. I imagine like, hey, we got to find the books. Go back to Leviticus and... Thousands of years before, this is what's amazing, thousands of years before in the book of Leviticus 13 and 14, right in there, God had put it in the law. He had given the process. He had given the ritual for cleansing of the lepers. Think about it. Thousands of years before, no priest had ever had to use it before. They had to go look it up again. It was a promise that God had put into the word of God thousands of years before for these lepers. Imagine that. It's like a promise that was there on mothballs. It's a promise that was there for this specific moment. Never had they had to read and certainly never had they had to apply these ceremonial laws. Let's see, let's see. Where does it say declaring lepers clean? Never had these acts before had to be taken because they're now the first ones that are being cleansed. Can I just remind you that this book is full of promises that are already there for you and I. 
this, this promise, this book of promises are there. And they were put in there for future days. And they're put there for us today, exactly where you and I are living at. I put it there for you. We just got to go look it up. And Jesus told the disciples of John the Baptist, if you remember, when they came and they found John the Baptist in prison and they, and they were sent out from prison to go find Jesus. And they go, I want you to go ask him. You got to find out, are you the one or do we look for another? And in Matthew chapter 11 and verse number five, if you're taking notes, Matthew 11 and five, he says this, I want you to go tell him, go tell him, disciples of John, go back to John and tell him, the blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached on them. Do you get it? He even threw in the fact that lepers were being cleansed. What a sign to John. What a sign of hope to John. What a sign of the power of God. What a sign to John that is in a prison cell about to lose his head that the power of God was even more powerful than the most dreaded of dreaded diseases of his day. And so the greatest breach of social distancing, the greatest breach of social distancing came from God himself. When he, the holy God, he came to earth, when he decided to come down and dwell among us sinners, God allows us to touch him. In the Bible, there's a story of a woman that had an issue of blood for 12 years. She was socially ostracized. She had to remain unclean. And because of what she faced in her body, she was certainly on the outcast line of life. And here, the Bible says that the multitudes were thronging him. And she makes her way through the crowd. And she says, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just touch the border, If I can just touch the hem of his garment, then I shall be clean. You know the story. It was there when she touches him. And when she touched him, it was there that she was instantly, completely healed. I'm so glad that God allows us to touch him. The musicians are going to play as we prepare to, to wrap this up today. And if we remember, then leprosy in the Bible is a type of sin. When, when finally we learn that we were born with this terrible disease of leprosy, then it brings us greater revelation of the love of God to come down to be with us. If you're writing down your scriptures, John chapter 1, 1 through 4 and 14, he says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. And then he says in verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without thing were nothing made that was made. In Him was life and life was the light of man. So when he came and touched, when life came and touched death, no wonder there was a change. That's what happened to all of us. We were, we were death. We were dead in our sins. Paul writes it. He says, we were dead in our sins and trespasses, but in him was life. And when life touches death, guess what? Death goes away. It's like when light comes into a dark room, darkness automatically flees. Verse 14, and the word, here, grasp this, grasp this. This is what's powerful. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Wow, what a revelation that God would come to dwell among us. You see, the great thing is that God is so holy that God is so just. We are so incompatible because of our sin. But the amazing thing is God made it so that you and I not only can be cleansed of sin, not only can we get rid of this leprosy that is stinking up our lives, but then that God would allow, get grabbed. I'm, 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 I'm hoping you're grabbing this, that not only does God heal us spiritually for here but he prepares us to live eternally with him in a holy city in a holy place you and I get to be a part of his eternal plan and eternal destiny what a God what a blessing what a miracle that we can touch him 
Jesus gives a story of the Good Samaritan. It's this Good Samaritan that found a man that had been beaten and robbed and was left for dead in the ditch. The Good Samaritan, which is really like a first responder. Others didn't want to get close to him. Others would walk on the other side of the street. Others would ignore him, yet doing everything they can to avoid this man that was left for dead. Yet the good Samaritan, the Bible says, came to where he was and he started cleaning him up. He started ministering healing to him. He tells the one that looked at him, he says, you know what, whatever it takes, he puts him on his own donkey, he takes him in and he says, whatever it takes, I want you to take care of him. Rather than social distancing himself for his own safety. This is where Jesus always goes to where the need is. He went where others would not due to fear. He went to others who would not due to their pride. He went out of his way to meet the woman at the well. She was socially outcast. Nobody wanted her. She came to get water at that well at noon because she knew that was the least likely time she'd have to encounter anybody on her day. And while she was there, Jesus set the whole thing up so that he would be able to be there and to meet her. And he did. And not only did he meet her, he reached out and changed her life. It was, it was Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. The tax collector, the little guy that's in the tree. And Jesus said, today I must go to your house. Wow, what a great God. And so Jesus responded to the pandemic of sin by coming to this earth. He that knew no sin, you see, he had the remedy. You see, he had the the way that we could be saved. It was that he had the anecdote that we needed, the antidote that we need for our sins. And so he that knew no sin took on sin so that you and I could live. That's what they tell us. They tell us that the best way of getting rid of it is actually to contract it so that you build up antibodies. And then they take the plasma of those that have been healed of it so they can give it to others. When, when, when they put a shot and they give you some kind of a remedy, sometimes it's, it's the, they put a little bit, it's the venom uh, when you're bitten by a snake. Literally, the antidote for that is to give you a little bit of that venom so that your body starts building up an immune system against it. And that's why the Bible says that you're going to bruise his heel. That snake, that snake in the book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 15 talked about that. So Jesus, the first responder, the only one that could stop the pandemic of sin came to this earth so that you and I can be saved. Jesus broke the social distance mandate and I'm so thankful so that you and I could touch him, so that you and I could approach him, so that you and I could be like him so that you and I could live eternally with him. Maybe you want to stand where you're at in your home. If you're in your car, maybe you want to pull over just for a moment. And we're going to pray. and We're going to thank God. And this is what we want to do today. We want to touch him. Wherever you're at, whatever situation, circumstance, I'm, I'm, I'm first of all telling you, nobody is worthy. The devil has lied to so many people saying, oh, you're not worthy. Well, the good news is welcome to the club because there is no one that has ever been worthy to touch God. No one has ever been worthy to approach God. But but, but we're not approaching God on our worthiness. We're not coming to God based on our righteousness. We're coming to God and we're able to approach him based on his. Aren't you glad that he gave you the breastplate of righteousness?
Ephesians chapter 6, if you're writing it down, Ephesians 6, it was the breastplate of righteousness. What does that cover? It covers my heart. It protects my heart. So when he looks at my heart, and if you have the breastplate of righteousness, he looks at your heart, and he doesn't see my righteousness, but he sees me through the blood. He sees me cleansed. He sees me righteous through his. Would you lift your hands right there and touch him right now? Would you reach out and touch him, God? I thank you. God, we thank you that even though you're a holy God, you came to this earth. You came down to our level. You came down from all of your glory and all of your holiness and you came down so that we could approach you so that we could touch you, God. Thank you, Lord, for not being so holy that we could not come to you. And thank you, Lord, for overlooking all of our leprosy and all of our sin, all of our imperfection, all of our disease, all of the things that we have in us that should keep a holy God millions of miles away. But you came to us and you come to us I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you broke the social distancing rule to come to this world that was infected with sin so that we could be like you. Thank you for your righteousness. Thank you for your love. Thank you, God. Come on, just love him right now. God, I love you. God, I love you. God, I love you. God, I thank you. You're so good. Maybe you want to repent of your sins if you've never repented. Maybe you want to pray and say, God, forgive me. Maybe you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission, the washing away of your sins. You can call on our app. You can ask it on our website. You can go and you can request to be baptized. We will meet you here. We have robes. The water is always warm and always ready. God bless you. Hallelujah, God. Worship with our team today. Praise God. Closer than before. Closer than before.
secret place. one more time as we go to the Lord in prayer as we just ask that the Lord would go with us and go before us for the upcoming week blessing us and ministering to us Lord Jesus we love you and we thank you God we thank you for the mighty word we thank you that you crossed the gulf that you bridged the gap that you came across the barrier you touched us God you allowed your holiness to be sullied by our unholiness you reached into our lives and touched us Lord God when we were unworthy, when we were undeserving, while we were yet sinners, Lord God, you touched us, you saved us, you delivered us, and we thank you, O Lord. Lord God, we pray that you'll go before us and guide us and protect us in the coming weeks. Lord Jesus, that you'll bring us back together in, in worship and praise and adoration, that this house will be full from the front row to the last row in the balcony, Lord Jesus, with praise and worship in not too many weeks, Lord God. We, we thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for all that you've done. And in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.